Hello everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the Stargirl Season 2 Review Series and today I am going to be talking about Episode 10, Summer School Chapter 10 which I have just finished watching and my god, what an unbelievable episode this was and the way it ended was just absolutely bone chilling which I'm going to get into talking about in a moment but once again this show continues to keep getting better and better every week and from my understanding we are three episodes left before wrapping up season two for good and to be honest I don't know about all of you but I don't think I'm ready for season two to end just yet because that's how good the writing the storytelling everything about it from the dialogue execution the soundtrack you name it everything just delivers and delivers very well so i'm going to give a quick recap of what's happened so far and then we're going to get straight into talking about episode 10. so this episode pretty much picks up where we left off at the end of episode 9 which saw a series of flashbacks involving the original JSA and we saw the death of Bruce Gordon and we saw Jay Garrick played once again superbly as always by John Wesley Shipp who as we all know played the original Flash many years ago. He had a small role but a very important role. We saw a series of flashbacks as I mentioned with the JSA taking a vote on whether or not to take out Eclipso and everybody voted against Pat and Jay Garrick about taking a life so that was very interesting and we also learned about the real reason why the original JSA disbanded and episode 9 was fantastic and episode 10 just completely blew that one out of the water and it's going to be very hard to choose which episode when season two does wrap up which one was the best one because they've all been good i would probably say from episode six onwards every episode has just been amazing so in this episode we saw the return of alan scott's daughter jenny now, for those of you who know that name, Alan Scott is, of course, the original Green Lantern. So we saw the return of Jenny and we got a little glimpse of her Green Lantern power, which was a real treat. And we finally learned about the Shade's true intentions. The Shade did return in this episode. And for the most part, we've seen the Shade kind of acting as an ally for the new JSA you know he's kind of like been an anti-hero but anybody who knows the shade or the shade's history you know the shade can't be trusted and this was pretty much confirmed in this episode and Beth has got the goggles back working and she is now able to communicate with Dr Midnight so lots of things have been going on and Yolanda is still on the missing list after quitting the JSA due to murdering Brainwave. But, you know, more on that for another time. But this episode was really, really good. So with that all said, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about episode 10, Summer School, chapter 10. So this episode starts off with an opening scene from decades ago where we see Pat is packing his things at the JSA garage when Sylvester comes in and tells him that he was wrong to bring him with them. He tells Pat that he thought there would be a chance or a way to save Bruce Gordon but he was wrong and Sylvester tells Pat that he's not just a friend he's been like a brother to him and apologizes for treating him very badly. Sylvester also tells Pat that the family Eclipso threatened was him and that's what sent him over the edge and that he doesn't want what's happened with Eclipso to destroy their family because he considers the JSA to be his family. We then cut to the present where we see Courtney confronts Pat and Barbara about what's happened with the original JSA regarding Eclipso and as I said this episode pretty much picked up where we left off at the end of episode 9. While they're arguing, we see a severely 
injured shade emerge from the ceiling and he tells them that there is a way that he can offer his assistance and he can tell them how to destroy Eclipso. It turns out the entity only remains free as long as the black diamond remains shattered and if they put it back together Eclipso will be dragged back into it. Oh boy. Pat doesn't bite of course but the shade is insistent that he is telling the truth and that he's only trying to help them. It turns out that the only way to put the diamond back together is the power of light but the cosmic staff isn't strong enough to do it. They need Jenny, the daughter of Alan Scott. At Beth's house, she sits with her parents and they're concerned about her constantly wearing the goggles, questioning about why she always wears them. Beth refuses to talk about it, telling them that they didn't tell her about the divorce, so she's not going to tell them about why she wears the goggles. Beth gets a call on the glasses and her parents try to take her down to the hospital with them, but she dismisses them, telling them that they should get on with their lives together and decide what is it they want to do. Divorce or no divorce? Beth very adamantly says, you told me to go make friends. And that's exactly what I did. And right now, my friends need me. So then we see Beth go to the Whitmore Duggan house to stay there while Pat and Courtney go find Jenny. Pat and Courtney head out and it's a tense drive and Pat tries to apologise for not telling her about the real reason why the JSA disbanded and Courtney demands to know why he lied to her. Pat explains that the JSA voted and he personally was against the murder. The JSA thought they were out of options. Pat says he didn't try to stop them. Courtney is still upset but Pat says that he didn't want the way she saw the JSA and him to change. At the police station we see our man aka Rick is still remaining in jail. He's staring at the ceiling when suddenly apples begin coming in through the window. We see it's Solomon Grundy. At Courtney's house Beth talks to Barbara about everything and asks if Dr Midnight can help with Eclipso. Her glasses briefly respond as he explains that he made a vow never to take a life and then went dark again. Mike heads out for reinforcements tasking the dog with watching the shade. After Courtney asks Pat not to shut her out, he shares with her the newspaper that reveals a green fire burning a federal building and says that an abandoned orphanage was also burned down. Jenny is in Civic City and he has an idea exactly where to find her. Beth works on the glasses and contacts Dr. Midnight. She tells him that the shade is there and he reveals that the shade actually saved them and he thinks he was just trying to pull him to safety. It turns out things didn't work out so well. He also gives Beth the Shade's backstory as a con man and a thief and turns out he was tasked to get the Black Diamond for a secret organisation and a dark ritual. However, the organisation decided to use the Shade as the sacrifice in the ritual but because the Shade has made a fake diamond, he ended up being a vessel for the dark energy, thus turning him into the Shade they know now. Interesting origin story about the Shade. Very well told. Really enjoyed that one a lot. Dr. Midnight says he'll help all he can from where he is and opens the files on Eclipso for Beth. In Civic City, Courtney and Pat go to the old JSA headquarters and Courtney discovers evidence that someone's been sleeping there. It turns out that it's been Jenny as she's been finding research on her brother and they follow the research to a youth rehabilitation facility where Jenny is staying at, but they say her brother is not. Pat and Courtney are taken to see Jenny who is collecting her brother's things. Jenny explains she broke into the federal building to try and find her brother's adoption files but couldn't find him and her powers got out of control. Pat tries to calm her down. Jenny explains her brother was arrested for shoplifting but vanished recently and she knows he needs help. She explains he might be looking for her too. As they all leave, the woman running the facility, Louise Love, watches them go and makes a call informing someone that Todd has a sister. Mm. As the shop back in Blue Valley, Mike works on Stripe while working. He hears the news about pink lightning striking all around town. Mike goes to investigate and finds an actual gingerbread house, life size. Hmm, very weird. On the couch, the shade is unwell and thinks Pat is his sister, confessing his regrets for not helping her and all his other mistakes in life. At the JSA headquarters, Jenny uses her powers to try and fuse the diamond back together and has some success. But as she's doing so, back at Courtney's house, things start to get very strange with the shade. Beth discovers something in the research that reveals that the shade actually lied. While putting the diamond back together was not only healing him, but restored the shade's powers. We see the shade fully at full strength, 
and apologizes to Barbara and leaves, but that's not all. While they're putting the diamond back together, we see Eclipso emerge and the entity shows up at the JSA headquarters and we see Courtney's staff is still weak, but Jenny hits Eclipso with her powers instead. Eclipso then absorbs Courtney and pulls her into the shadows despite Pat's best efforts to save her. And that's how episode ends in absolute mere silence. Wow. Unbelievable episode. Really enjoyed this one a lot. You know, it's still hard to believe that we're three episodes away from season two wrapping up, but you know, we are really getting close to the end and it's just getting better and better. And you know, the shade actually being revealed as the villain, you know, with his powers being restored while tricking everyone into putting the diamond back together. Very good twist. I mean, we all know the shade couldn't be trusted. This was still an epic twist. And Courtney disappearing into the shadows. I did not see that one coming. I actually thought it was going to be Pat who would disappear into the shadows, not Courtney, because, you know, she's kind of been the glue throughout the show, leading the JSA and all of the new heroes to try and stop the bad guys. So for her to actually be the one that disappears, didn't see that coming, but a very good twist. So that's going to be it for me. I am going to wrap this up now. What did you think of episode 10? Did you enjoy it? What was your thoughts on the Shade's backstory? Did you enjoy that? And also, what about the Shade's powers being restored? Do you think um, that was a good twist? And also, what about Eclipso dragging Courtney into the shadows? How do you think the others are going to get her back? And could this also be the reason that spurs Yolanda to become Wildcat again and make her return? And also, what about Jenny? Do you think at some point before season two finishes, do you think we will see her become the Green Lantern? And if not, is there a possibility that we could see her father, the original Green Lantern, Alan Scott, make some form of an appearance? You know what to do, guys. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts and comments down below. And I will see all of you next time for another edition of the Starville Season 2 Review Series, where I am going to be talking about Episode 11, which I am really looking forward to talking about and seeing, especially after the way this episode ended. Should be a really good one. So until next time, take care, everybody, and stay safe. And once again, thanks for listening.